Rizwan. I'm Dr. Rizwana, working as a professor of physics in the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this video, today I'm going to discuss about biasing of PN junction. So, in my previous videos, I have discussed in detail about what exactly is PN junction and what are the different methods to form PN junction, and then next, what happens when PN junction is formed. So, before going in detail, first I would like to just recollect what exactly happens when uh, PN junction is formed. We know that if we take um, extensive semiconductors, B-type and N-type semiconductors, and when we join them together, we know that this P-type and this is N-type semiconductors. Uh, we know that in P-type semiconductor, we have uh, majority charge carriers holes, and then when we talk about n-type semiconductors, we have uh, majority charge carriers electrons. And this uh, p-type semiconductors, they are formed by doping uh, trivalent impurities to intrinsic semiconductor like silicon or germanium, whereas n-type semiconductor it is formed by doping pentavalent impurities to intrinsic semiconductors. And uh, once we combine this p-type and n-type semiconductors, and the forming PN junction, for that we have to follow different techniques. And I think already have discussed about three different methods of forming PN junction. First method is cone junction type, where during formation of crystal itself, what we'll do, we'll take our uh, intrinsic semiconductor in molten form. And then during growth of crystal to half of the melt, we'll add one type of impurity, then other half it is uh, doped with the uh, opposite kind of impurity. And then it is solidified in order to get a crystal. So in that crystal, half region will be one type of uh, semiconductor and other region will be opposite type of semiconductor. There is grown junction type. Grown junction type where during growth of crystal itself, uh, we are forming P-type and we are combining P-type and N-type semiconductor. Then, Coming to second method of formation of PN junction, we have fused or allowed junction type. In this method, what we'll do, we'll, we'll take P-type semiconductor, N-type semiconductor, and in this case, we'll take a thin wafer. So in this, uh, if I talk about allowed or, sorry, alloyed or fused junction type. So in this method, just I'll take a thin wafer of N-type. Wafer means it's whose thickness is very, very small. So this is our N-type material. On this, just we are going to put one dot of indium. So here indium, it belongs to group 3 element, okay, and which uh, of course it is called as travelant impurity. And then when we go for high temperature, when we heat this arrangement, then what we will observe here is this indium uh, atoms, they will penetrate onto the surface of n-type wafer, making upper surface p-type and lower surface will be n-type. This is called as alloyed or fused junction type. And whereas in third type is diffuse junction type, in this case also we will take n-type wafer and we will uh, maintain it in hot atmosphere by putting it in a furnace and we are going to maintain temperature at 1000 degrees Celsius. And then we are going to expose this n-type wafer to a gas of boron atoms. So again, this boron, it is uh, like it belongs to travelant impurity, then here diffusion process takes place. Outside the n-type wafer, we have gas of uh, higher concentration of uh, gas of boron atoms. Then this gas atoms, what they'll do, they'll try to diffuse onto the surface of this n-type wafer, making this that upper layer p-type and then bottom layer n-type. So this is called as diffuse junction type. So by using these three methods, once we form p-n junction, then what we'll observe here is there it will be a formation of one particular layer. That layer it is called as depletion layer. So what exactly is this depletion layer? This depletion layer it consists of immobile charge carriers or charge carriers which do not take part in conduction. So because this layer it is depleted of charge carriers, it is called as depletion layer. So once P and junction is formed, here I have P side and this is N side and this is our region which is combining P-type and N-type semiconductor. And of course, here we have our free charge carriers, which are positively charged. They are holes. And then onto the N side, we have 
here also free charge carriers which are negatively charged called as the electrons and uh, we know that once pn junction is formed the first process will be diffusion of charge carriers where we have flow of charge carriers from higher concentration to low concentration region so what we'll observe here is holes from the p side when they go to n side then what they are going to do they are going to combine with electrons there they are going to lose their energy and they'll give rise to positive ions so now we call them as positive ions or simply we can call them as immobile holes so these are immobile positive ions similarly electrons when they migrate to p side they lose their energy to holes there or we can also say that uh, electron is recombining with hole and here this electron will also lose its energy and then here on to the p region we have accumulation of immobile negative ions so these are immobile negative ions and here of course we have holes migrating from p region but because they have lost their energy they are immobile and similarly electrons which got migrated from n side they have lost their energy so they will become immobile so as you can see here under equilibrium condition because of this charge separation a potential barrier will be developed so a barrier voltage will be developed and what is the role of this barrier voltage it will try for it will uh, like prevent the further diffusion of charge carriers and this particular layer which is formed it is called as potential barrier or it is also called as depletion layer so it is called as potential barrier or it is also called as depletion layer and what we will observe here is once we go for biasing of p n junction biasing means nothing but when we are going to apply external voltage to this p n junction then what we will observe here is this potential barrier or depletion layer for a given p n junction diode it is going to change so either width of potential barrier it will increase or decrease depending upon uh, how we are biasing that particular p-n junction. So today we are going to discuss about uh, what are the different ways of biasing p-n junction and depending upon type of biasing how this p-n junction is going to work. So today we will focus on this and uh, uh, before that first we should have clear understanding about this depletion layer and one more thing what we have to understand here is uh, we can make these immobile charge carriers in uh, depletion layer mobile either uh, like uh, by biasing them or also what is the other way of like supplying energy and that energy can also be made in the form of uh, light if you make this light fall on this depletion layer then also these charge carriers they can become mobile and they may take part in conduction and uh, of course coming to this uh, symbol for uh, diode we have uh, in this case we have one triangle which is followed by vertical line and this triangle it represents p side of p n junction and this vertical line it will represent n side of p n junction and this will represent anode part and this will represent cathode part so this is positive and this one is negative so this is about the formation of p n junction and how this potential barrier is formed and once this potential barrier is formed and as you can see that there is formation of electric field what we will observe here is because of this of course this uh, potential barrier is going to uh, prevent diffusion of charge carriers but once this electric field is formed then there is one more phenomenon called as drifting so here under the influence of this electric field some of the charge carriers minority charge carriers they will start flowing and they will give rise to drift current so here diffusion current will also be there as well as drift current so now talking about this uh, biasing of junction diode and uh, as you can uh, see from the name itself the term bias so what exactly is bias bias it refers to application of dc voltage so here we are just concentrating on application of dc voltage so direct current where amplitude of current will not change with the uh, uh, like frequency so it's not a factor it is a constant value and uh, here what we are going to see here is this biasing it can be done in different ways so first of all what exactly is our biasing biasing is when we apply external voltage and in order to make uh, this diode operate in one particular type of system 
and what we are going to observe here is when we supply this external energy to pn junction of course it is called as bias voltage or simply it is called as biasing and what is the use of biasing this method it will either increase or decrease the barrier potential of the junction so because this biasing of pn junction it has lot of effect on depletion layer or potential barrier that's why i have explained about formation of depletion layer or potential barrier once pn junction is formed so what is the main role of this uh, biasing biasing what it will try to do it will try to either increase or decrease the barrier potential of the junction depending upon how we are biasing that pn junction and what we are going to see here is in the process when we do our biasing in such a way that if potential barrier is decreased then we'll see that across the pn junction there will be flow of current and this pn junction it will act as a conductor whereas suppose in case if our potential barrier is increased then in that case this pn junction it will act as an insulator and here there won't be any flow of current so now usually when we talk about this biasing or applying of external dc voltage to pn junction there are two ways of biasing first biasing it is called as forward biasing and second type it is called as reverse biasing so first is forward biasing and second one is reverse biasing now what we'll do what is the effect of forward biasing what we'll observe here is because of forward biasing there will be decrease in the width of depletion region okay and whereas completely opposite to it we have reverse biasing in reverse biasing what we'll observe here is we'll apply our external dc voltage in such a way that in this case depletion region will be increased width of the depletion region will increase so to understand why there is decrease because of forward biasing and why there is increase because of reverse biasing so in order to uh, ha have this we are going to proceed to our next slides now first we are going to talk about forward biasing so what exactly is forward biasing so in uh, forward biasing as you can see here if you just look at this point in the slide here we are saying that negative terminal of the battery it is connected to n type material so here what we are doing we are applying biasing is nothing but application of external dc voltage to pn junction so in this case in forward biasing what we are doing negative terminal of battery it is connected to n type material and then positive terminal of the battery it is connected to p type material so if you look at the figure given in this slide so this is the p side of pn junction whereas this is n side of pn junction and as you can see here of course p has majority charge carriers holes and n has majority charge carriers electrons and this p it is connected to positive terminal as you can see this is our external voltage external dc voltage which is connected to pn junction so if you look at this external dc voltage this uh, p type of pn junction it is connected to positive terminal of battery and whereas n side of pn junction it is connected to negative terminal of battery so this particular connection it is called as forward biasing so what is forward biasing this forward biasing is nothing but where p side of pn junction it is connected to positive terminal of battery and n side of pn junction it is connected to negative terminal of battery and this type of connection it is also called also called as giving positive voltage so this type of connection is nothing but giving positive voltage to pn junction now so we have come to know about what exactly is forward biasing now we'll see what happens when we forward bias a pn junction so if you just look at the mechanism that is involved after forward biasing of pn junction as we know that in p type of pn junction there are a lot of holes whereas in n type of pn junction we have lot of electrons and when we talk about holes they are positively charged and when we talk about uh, electrons they are negatively charged and because p side it is connected to positive terminal of battery so here i have positive terminal of battery and when we take our this p region of course we have our holes holes are positively charged okay so obviously what happens to these uh, holes which are present in this p region they'll suffer repulsion from positive terminal of the battery so these holes they'll suffer repulsion from this positive terminal of battery and then they'll start moving towards the depletion layer as you can see 
here we have marked our arrows in such a way that all the holes which are present in this P side because they are suffering repulsion from positive terminal of the battery where they are moving, they are moving towards the depletion layer. And similarly, electrons which are present on the N side, of course, we know that electrons, they are negatively charged and because this side of PN junction, it is connected to negative terminal of battery. So here, this negatively charged electrons, they will also suffer repulsion from negative terminal of battery and they will also start moving towards the depletion layer. So this is one very important point or we can say that one important phenomena uh, which is used for application purpose. So as you can see here, holes from P side and electrons from N side because they are suffering repulsion from positive and negative terminal of battery. So they are made to move or they are forced to move towards the depletion layer. So here, as you can see here in this slide, so electrons from the N region they are crossing junction and of course they try to enter P region also. And similarly, what do you mean by moving towards the depletion layer? This is nothing but they'll try to enter the other region. So holes, because they are being attracted, uh, sorry, because they are being uh, repelled from this uh, same polarity side. So that's why they'll try to enter the opposite side of region. So electrons, uh, what they'll do, they'll cross, they'll move across the junction layer and they'll try to enter P region. And here, what we are going to observe here is here. Now, there is very one important phenomena that takes place uh, during forward passing of PN junction. As you can see here, there is some attractive force that is generated in the P region. Okay, and because of this attractive force, all the holes that are attracted towards the electrons. Okay, so here because uh, we have uh, all this uh, because holes that are being attracted towards the N side and here we have our electrons being attracted towards the P side. So as you can make out that because these electrons they are moving towards the P side. So here what they'll do they'll start moving towards the positive terminal. Now this is very very important point. So what happens to these electrons which are present in N side? Because of their attraction towards the positive terminal of battery so these electrons, what they'll do, they'll start moving towards the positive terminal. And because of this attraction of electrons towards the positive terminal, we'll observe that if we keep one uh, milliameter, if we keep one milliameter in this circuit, we'll observe that there will be flow of current in this circuit because of these electrons getting attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery. So here the electrons are attracted and they'll start moving towards the positive terminal and simultaneously what happens to the holes because holes because they are suffering from uh, repulsion from this positive terminal of battery they'll try to move towards the negative terminal of battery and because of these movement of electrons and holes now we can make out that there is a movement of charge carriers. So, and also one thing what we have to observe here is in depletion layer, we have immobile charge carriers and these immobile charge carriers also, they'll start gaining energy because of this basing, forward basing. And these charge carriers will also uh, take part in conduction. So, immobile charge carriers will also gain energy and they'll also start flowing. So, automatically what happens to width of the depletion layer? Width of the depletion layer decreases. Why? Because there will be movement of these electrons and holes and also uh, because when these immobile charge carriers become mobile charge carriers so there will be reduction in the number of positive and negative ions as we have seen i have already told you that in the depletion layer we'll have lot of immobile charge carriers so as you can see this is p type and this is n type so here we have our holes and here we have our electrons so when these holes, when they go towards the N region, so they become positive ions and here electrons, they will form positive, uh, negative ions here, electrons, okay. Now what happens once we reverse, uh, sorry, when once we forward bias them, even 
what we'll observe here is whatever immobile negative ions are present here, they'll also start getting attracted towards the positive terminal of battery. And similarly, here we have immobile positive ions, they'll also start getting attracted towards the negative terminal of battery. So that's why they'll start moving, they'll gain energy and because of attraction towards the terminal of the battery, they'll also start moving. And here because there is redu reduction in the immobile charge carriers present in the depletion layer, so what happens to width of the depletion layer, width of depletion layer it is going to decrease. So this is one very important point which we, which we are going to observe in case of forward biasing. So in forward biasing, what exactly will happen? What exactly is forward biasing? In forward biasing, uh, our PN junction, uh, P side of PN junction, it is connected to positive terminal of battery and N side of PN junction, it is connected to negative terminal of battery and here holes from P side because of repulsion from positive terminal of battery, they'll go towards the N side and similarly electrons from N side suffering repulsion from negative terminal of battery, they'll go towards the P side and here whatever immobile positive and negative ions which are present in the depletion layer, they also start moving because of their attraction to their opposite polarity ends of uh, external DC voltage and here we have lot of charge carriers moving so that's why what we'll observe here is width of the depletion region will decrease and what we are going to observe here is suppose if I take variable external voltage so here if I take a variable external voltage where I can increase voltage in steps then as I keep on increasing voltage then slowly slowly width of depletion layer it is going to decrease and there exists one particular voltage there exists one particular forward voltage at which we will observe that depletion layer will be completely eliminated. So there is one particular voltage at which depletion layer is completely eliminated and that particular voltage it is called as threshold voltage and uh, it is usually represented as VTH. So VTH is our threshold voltage and what exactly is this voltage? It is the voltage at which depletion layer is completely eliminated during forward biasing of the injunction. And once there is no depletion layer then of course there is no like there is no obstruction to the flow of charge carriers. So here we'll have plenty of charge carriers moving. So that's why we'll observe that large amount of current flows across the PN junction and our PN junction it will act as a conductor. It will act as a conductor when it is forward biased. So it is about the forward biasing of PN junction. Now we are going to discuss about uh, another type of biasing. So that uh, another type of biasing it is called as reverse biasing. So coming to this reverse biasing, so what we are going to observe here is in reverse bias condition, of course, it has to be completely opposite to forward biasing. So in reverse biasing, negative terminal of battery, it is connected to P-type material and whereas positive terminal of battery, it is connected to N-type material. So you can make out in this figure, which is given in this slide. So this is uh, P side of PN junction and this is N side of PN junction. So in last case in forward biasing we have connected a P side of PN junction to positive terminal but in this case what we are doing we are connecting it in other direction so P type of PN junction it is connected to negative terminal of external voltage and whereas N type of PN junction it is connected to positive terminal of external voltage. Okay, so here P type it is connected to negative terminal and N type it is connected to positive terminal. Then if we connect our PN junction in this way, then what exactly will happen in PN junction? Still it will act as a conductor or uh, how it will start working we are going to see now. Now again coming back uh, to our charge carriers. In uh, P type we have uh, plenty of holes. So there are many holes in P type and coming to N type we have many electrons and uh, these holes because they are positively charged. now. Here, uh, what is the end of the polarity we have here? We have negative end of the polarity. So all these holes, they start getting attracted towards the negative terminal of battery and they'll try to move away from the depletion layer. Okay, so here we have lot of holes and these holes, they get attracted towards the negative terminal of battery. Okay, so that's why we'll see that these holes, they are moving out of the depletion layer. 
and coming to n side of this pn junction in n side we have electrons and these electrons are negatively charged and these electrons they will also start getting uh, attracted towards the positive terminal of battery and because of attraction of holes towards the negative terminal of battery and electrons towards the positive terminal of battery or we can also say that holes and electrons because they are moving away from the depletion layer so here thickness of depletion layer it is going to increase. So here suppose if we talk about uh, immobile ions which are present in the depletion layer So here we have our depletion layer, this is a P type and this is N type. Here we have holes and then here we have electrons. Okay, And uh, when we consider our depletion layer, here we have negative ions or we can also say these are immobile electrons. And here we have positive ions, these are immobile holes. Okay, once we reverse bias this PN junction where P type is connected to negative terminal and N type is connected to positive terminal, then what we are observe here is as we can make out that uh, because of their attraction, because these holes are moving away from depletion layer and these electrons are also moving away from depletion layer. So as you can make out that there is increase in the depletion region, what exactly we mean by increase in the depletion region? So increase in depletion region is nothing but you can make out that there is increase in immobile charge carriers. So as you can see at this junction, in this junction layer or depletion layer, these uh, negative ions have increased. Okay, And whereas on to the end side of this junction layer, there will be increase in positive ions. So as you can see here in this case, we are giving name to this negative ions as P type negative ions and this uh, immobile holes in depletion layer we are naming them as N type positive ions. So these are P type negative ions and these are N type positive ions. So what are uh, N type positive ions? N type positive ions are nothing but holes coming from P side towards the N side and becoming immobile. And similarly, what are P-type negative ions? Electrons getting migrated from N side to P side, losing their energy and becoming immobile. So there will be increase in the number of immobile charge carriers. So here depletion layer is also increased. So that's why we'll find that there won't be any flow of current. Why? Because there is no, there is lack of movement of electrons and holes. And there is increase in the number of immobile, immobile charge carriers in depletion layer. So that's why we'll say that reverse bias PN junction layout, it will act as an insulator. So here in the end, we can say that uh, if you take your PN junction, so when we talk about this PN junction, we can say that it is a unilateral device. So here, this we can call it as unilateral device. And in this unilateral, why we are calling it as unilateral device because when we forward bias uh, this uh, PN junction, it will act as conductor. So when we forward bias PN junction, it will act as conductor. And whereas when we reverse bias this PN junction, so once we go for reverse biasing of this PN junction, it will act as insulator. So that's why we call this PN junction to be unilateral device. And of course, uh, during reverse biasing, there will be uh, like uh, what type of ammeter we are going to connect in the circuit. We are going to connect micro ammeter. So which is 10 to the power of minus 6 amps. Whereas in case of forward biasing, we have connected milli ammeter, which is 10 to the power of minus 3 amps. So here, of course, uh, not completely zero current, but there will be very small, very minute amount of current flowing across the circuit. And that minute current, it is because of flow of minority charge carriers. We know that onto the P side, we have some minority of electrons. And these electrons, because they suffer repulsion from negative terminal of battery, they'll try to go towards the N side or they're attracted towards the positive terminal of battery. And similarly, this N side, it will have minority of holes and these holes, because they suffer repulsion from positive terminal of battery. So they'll try to go towards the P side or they get attracted towards the negative terminal of battery and because of these minority charge carriers there will be flow of very small amount of current and what is the magnitude of current flowing uh, under reverse biasing it comes in 
micro answer. So this is about the forward and reverse biasing and by considering these two types of biasing, we'll try to draw VI characteristics of junction curve. So if we consider VI characteristics of junction diode in this, first if I talk about uh, forward biasing. As you can see in this slide, if you look at the circuit diagram, in this circuit diagram, we have first variable power supply and uh, how much of voltage we are applying here. Here we are, we can go up to maximum of 12 volts and we can go to this 12 volts in steps. Okay, so we'll have a knob to this power supply. When we keep on uh, rotating this knob, then our voltage, it will start increasing in steps. And what is the maximum value we can go? We can go to 12 volts. And of course, we have a resistor, which will help us for flow of current in the circuit. And what ammeter we are using here, we are making use of milli ammeter. And of course, this is the symbol for our diode. Okay, so this triangle followed by this line, it represents a symbol for diode and this is, uh, this triangle, it represents anode or positive side of uh, PN junction and whereas this line, it will represent negative side of PN junction and also in order to measure how much voltage is being, uh, uh, like how much voltage across the diode is flowing in order to know that we are making use of voltmeter and this voltmeter, it is connected across the junction diode. So when we have such circuit diagram, when we are forward biasing our diode, I think in this uh, circuit diagram, we have forward biased the diode where um, positive terminal of battery, as you can make out that it is connected to the triangle. It means that it is connected to anode end of diode and negative terminal of battery, it is connected to this cathode end of diode. So that's why we are going for forward biasing. Now, if you look at this figure, as I have told you, we are giving input voltage in steps. So we are going to increase slowly our voltage from 0 to 12 volts. Now I have started rotating the knob of this external voltage. Then what we'll observe here is, as you can see, what exactly is our VI characteristic? In VI characteristic, with application of input voltage, how current, what is the magnitude of current flowing across the diode that we are going to measure. Now, this is my forward voltage. So on x-axis, I'm taking forward voltage, which is my input voltage given to this diode. And then on the y-axis, I'm going to take forward current, that is current which is flowing across the diode. And we know that during the forward biasing current, it is measured in milliamps. And first, as you can see, we start from here, from zero voltage. When voltage is zero, current will also zero. So there is no flow of current across the diode. Now slowly as voltage is increased, so are you able to observe this uh, thick uh, line which is showing VI characteristic during forward biasing. So initially, even though we are increasing voltage, there is uh, no current flowing across the diode. So if you look at this particular uh, part of this curve, so in this part of the curve, we'll notice that at very small voltages, when we have applied small voltages, okay, forward voltage, then uh, we won't get any reading in the ammeter. It means that there is no flow of a current across the diode. This is because of presence of depletion layer. Whereas if I keep on increasing voltage, then what we'll observe here is, as you can make out, there is one point, there is one voltage, okay, and this voltage, it is represented by VTH, okay, or, and what is the name given to this voltage? This voltage, it is also called as knee voltage, sometimes it is called as cutting voltage, or it is also called as threshold voltage. And what exactly is this voltage? What we'll observe here is, uh, we know that we have discussed uh, during forward biasing, what happens to depletion layer, slowly it will start decreasing. And then decreasing, decreasing at one particular voltage, which is called as mean voltage or uh, this threshold voltage, what happens to depletion layer? Depletion layer is completely eliminated. So here there is no depletion layer at all. And what is the role played by presence of depletion layer? Depletion layer, it is going to prevent flow of charge carriers. Yeah. But we'll observe that there is one particular voltage, which is called as mean voltage or threshold voltage, where depletion layer will get completely eliminated. And once depletion layer is completely eliminated, we can observe that there is sudden rise in the current. Current, large amount of current, it will start flowing across the diode. So you can make out from this particular uh, line, solid line uh, of this curve. Okay, 
So here, what we are going to observe here is why there is sudden rise in current after this voltage because there is complete elimination of depletion layer. So large amount of current flows across the circuit, and uh, uh, of course. Uh, from this uh, curve, we can make out what exactly, see different diodes, uh, depending upon uh, what material you are using in order to make diode, this threshold voltage is going to change. So, voltage at which uh, there is complete elimination of the depletion layer during forward passing, it is going to vary uh, with uh, what type of material we are using in order to make this junction diode. So, here, and also we can also, uh, like uh, we can find forward resistance of the diode. In order to find forward resistance of the diode, what we are going to do, we are going to make use of a simple uh, Ohm's law. So at this region, I will not go to this region. Okay, so at this region, I am going to select two points on this curve. Okay, so let us call this particular point as V2 and I2. And this point, this particular point, let us call it as V1, I1. So it is giving our voltage and current values as V1, I1. And this point on the curve, it is going voltage and current as V2 and I2. Now, if I want to know at this region, at this region, okay, so still there is some resistance given by the diode. So that forward resistance of the diode. Usually, we'll try to find forward resistance of a given diode in the laboratory. If you perform experiment using diode during forward biasing, if you want to know what is the resistance offered at low voltages. So in order to find forward resistance of the diode, so what we are going to do, of course, we have our Ohm's law. According to Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. And from this, what is our resistance? Resistance is V by I. So using that Ohm's law, so forward resistance, which is denoted as RF. So it is taken as delta V by delta I. So what is our delta V? Delta V is V2 minus V1 and our current is I2 minus I1. So this uh, volt, uh, as you can see that voltage, it is in volts, but this is in milliamps. So here we'll have 10 to the power of minus 3 in the denominator and this will give rise our forward resistance in ohms. That is what we are going to do during forward characteristic. Okay, so this is about the forward biasing, VI characteristic during forward biasing. I think we have discussed and also we have seen how we can uh, calculate forward resistance of the diode. And uh, what uh, one thing we have to understand here is uh, like uh, there is a limit for application of uh, voltage to diode during uh, forward biasing. Suppose if we keep on increasing voltage, if you go for very high values of forward voltage, as you can make out that as voltage is being increased, current is also increasing and if you go for very high forward voltage, then what happens to our diode? Diode is going to get destroyed because of large amount of uh, current flowing across it. So that's why every diode, it will have one uh, limiting voltage. So we should not go beyond that voltage. Otherwise, that diode, it will get spoiled or it will get damaged and it cannot be used uh, in the next time. So that's why what we have to observe here is, uh, there will be one particular voltage and we should not go above that uh, voltage because the diode it will get spoiled because of large current flowing uh, across it and there will be overheating of the diode also and this is called as breakdown of the diode. So this particular uh, of course uh, uh, stage where uh, diode it get destroyed because of overheating and why it will get overheated because of large amount of current flowing across it and that particular voltage it is called as breakdown voltage so always we have to operate our diode okay uh, like uh, we have to operate them between two voltages one is threshold voltage where there is uh, where our diode it will start acting as a conductor and then we should not go beyond breakdown voltage where uh, diode will get destroyed. So always we try to maintain our, what is the operating voltage for a given diode? It will be between threshold voltage and breakdown voltage. Now coming to reverse characteristic, here as you can see here, in reverse biasing, so which is completely opposite to forward biasing, so this is our diode, okay. As you can see in this circuit diagram, here positive terminal of battery it is connected to negative end of the diode and negative terminal of battery it is connected to p-type or uh, anode of uh, diode and in this case what type of ammeter we have taken we have taken micro ammeter because we know that very small amount of current flows uh, during reverse biasing and that current it is because of flow of minority carriers and basically we will say that during reverse biasing our diode it will act as insulator. Okay.
Okay, so again, we have our variable power supply. And in this case, we have taken 0 to 15 volts uh, external voltage. And here also we are going in steps. So here we have variable supply followed by resistance. And of course, we have our ammeter connected in series. And uh, which type of ammeter we are using? Ammeter that will measure current in microamps. And of course, this is our diode. And of course, we are connecting one voltage across the diode in order to measure voltage. Now, if you look at this characteristic, so as you can mean, what do you mean by reverse biasing? We know that uh, here uh, we are applying voltage in the opposite direction. So here we are voltage is minus V. So it is a reverse voltage and uh, we are going to get current. So negative current. So this is minus IR. So this is reverse current and this reverse current it is in micro amps. So as you can see, we are making use, we are drawing this curve in third quadrant. So where both voltage and current are negative. So now if we see at this curve, as you can make out that when we are increasing reverse voltage, when slowly, slowly, when we are increasing this reverse voltage, here the current, the flow of current is very, very negligible. So the very small amount of current flowing. And this will keep on going. So no matter how much voltage you are increasing, how much reverse bias voltage you are giving to diode, still there will be no change in the current. Same negligible current that too in microamps it will start flowing up. Okay, but once we go for very high reverse bias voltage, so if I go for very high reverse bias voltage, we'll observe that this curve it will become like this. So here, as you can see, suddenly there is increase in the current. But once we go above this high reverse bias voltage, and this reverse bias voltage, it is called as reverse breakdown voltage, where there is a flow of large current. Here also, once I cross above this, there will be a diode, it will get damaged. So we should not go to such high reverse bias voltage. So we should try to avoid applying reverse voltage below this breakdown voltage. And here what you are going to observe here is, uh, of course, here current, uh, this reverse current it will be very, very negligible. And here we have taken, if diode it is made up of germanium, then how much current is flow, uh, flowing? It is flowing around 50 microamps and if it is silicon, it is 20 microamps. Whereas if you go for this forward biasing, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, this uh, threshold voltage, cutting voltage or mean voltage, for germanium, it is around 0.3 volts and whereas for uh, silicon, it is 0.7 volts. And as you can see here, one more point which we missed in uh, forward biasing is when we look at this curve, what we have observed here is first uh, there is small current and here current flow, it is not linear, it is usually exponential. So this current is very much uh, like uh, it is going in exponential in forward biasing and in this case as you can make out that current is very very small and one thing what we have to observe here is why there is flow of very small current because what happens to width of depletion layer, width of depletion layer it is going to increase in reverse biasing so that's why flow of current is very small so in the end if we try to uh, just put all the points which we have discussed. So this is our ultimate VI characteristic curve of a given photodiode. So as you can make out this curve, it represents our forward bias diode and this curve, it will represent reverse bias diode. So as you can see here, there exists certain small voltage, which is called as mean voltage or threshold voltage, which is 0.3 volts for germanium and 0.7 volts for silicon. After this, your uh, like uh, diode, it will act as conductor and large amount of current is flowing across it. Whereas in reverse biasing, as you can see here, which uh, this curve, we are taking it in third quadrant where voltage and current will be negative. And as you can see, no matter how much reverse voltage we are increasing, there is very negligible current flowing. And then what we are observing here is if you go for very high reverse bias voltage or when we go for reverse breakdown voltage, there will be increase in current. And here what exactly is happening here, whatever covalent bonds are formed, electrons which are bound in, uh, like which have taken part in covalent bond formation, they'll come out of their covalent bonds and they'll start taking part in conduction. But what we'll observe here is once we go to such high reverse bias voltage, then our diode will get spoiled. So we, we should try to avoid going to such high reverse bias voltage. So this is about uh, biasing of PN junction and uh, of course followed by how we can explain this biasing of PN junction on VI characteristic curve. 
So I hope you are able to understand better about biasing of P N junction. So I'm going to end my session here. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.